Now, why would y'all ask me to wash this? Knowing it would piss me off. These blush bunnies present Moxie. Dan it, 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 Dan it. I like that. It's gonna be my Dan it, 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 Batman. Going into watching this movie, I had no idea what I was walking into. First of all, it's called Moxie. Moxie? Really? What does that even mean? Force of character, determination, or nerve? Yeah, I'd say they had some nerve with this one. But before I get into it, let me set the scene. Vivian is a high school junior with nothing going for herself. Raised in a single parent home, her mother loves her to pieces and she and her best friend are inseparable. And I don't mean to be funny when I say she has nothing going for herself. Shortly after we meet her, we find out that she has a paper to write, the topic being a cause you care about. This prompts her to ask her mom, what do 16 year olds care about? Then she says to her best friend, I need something to write about. What do I care about? And her friend Claudia is like, uh, me like with all the things going on in the world you can think of one thing that you care about child so vivian literally <laughs> adds no value to anybody that is until she latches on to the new kid in school a black girl afro latina by the name of lucy hernandez now it's important that i mention that she's black because her race plays into the biggest problem i have with this movie but I'll get to that in a second. On Lucy's first day, she has an encounter with Mitchell. Mitchell is the school's star football player, yet a huge disappointment to humankind. How can I put it? You know those viral videos of food that look like a burger or chicken or whatever, and then you cut into it and it's cake? Pretty on the outside, not at all what you expect on the inside? And let's pretend we all hate cake. That's Mitchell. So, like I said, it's Lucy's first day. The question the teacher has for the class is, what was the female perspective in the book, The Great Gatsby? Lucy is like, listen, why are we even still reading this book as a society? This old rich white man has everything he wants except for the woman he desires, and we're supposed to feel sorry for him? No, not some old white man living it up to the crack of dawn. Guess who gets offended by her saying this? Go on, guess. That's right. Mitchell. He starts going, I like the book. Why do you have to bring all of that up? Stop talking when I'm talking. You interrupted her. You self-entitled little yep. So now I'm getting riled up. My blood pressure is rising. Vivian in the back admiring from afar. Oh wow, look at this girl standing up for herself. However must that be? Which I'm not saying that she can't admire her. That's not my issue at all. My issue comes into play when Lucy has her next encounter with Mitchell. She's standing at the machine trying to buy a pop or soda if that's the word you prefer but I say pop and that's the end of that discussion but she's standing there and here he comes getting in her face coming on to her but like a jerk not like a guy you would actually talk to and when she doesn't take to his advances he flips the script spits in her drink and makes it known that this is now how things will be this is the energy you will be getting you have unleashed the dragon Lucy does not back down and basically lets him know she is not the one to be played with so this is where my problem with Vivian comes into play in the movie as a whole. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Principal Shelley. Principal Shelley. Now, the actress that plays her, Marcia Gay Harden, she is great. Every time I see her on screen, she does her thing. However, comma, she was acting a little too good in this movie because she pissed me off but that was the whole point of her character nailed it so lucy goes to principal shelly to tell her that mitchell has been harassing her and shelly tells her oh can you just say he's been bothering you because if you say harassment then i have to do paperwork and i ain't trying to do all that girl what what she goes on and on about how he's the quarterback of the football team and basically insinuating that he could never do such a thing i'm thinking to myself is this her son or something why is she going so hard for him and the fact that there are women in power who dismiss claims like this from other women all the time is mind-blowing but lucy is like girl i am not about to say that to convince you this is what he did to me then here comes vivian just ignore mitchell i know he can be annoying but it'll be fine lucy it's like annoying is that how you would categorize this thanks for the advice but no thanks i'll keep handling my business while you mind your own okay well she didn't say it like that but she wanted to in the meantime there's this list floating around composed of different categories who's the hottest who has the best set of maracas the best 
peach. You get the point. And the girls of the school are sick of it. They're tired of being objectified. So Vivian gets so inspired by all that has occurred. She kind of brings it up to her mom to see what she would do. And her mom was like, back in my day, we were rebels. We fought for our rights and yada yada. Vivian goes on to make an anonymous newsletter in the name of feminism, calling out the man for indecent behavior. She calls for a sign of solidarity, if you will, drawing stars on your hands to show that you're with the movement. And I have to say, I'm glad that Claudia pointed out that the stars weren't going to do anything. Like, okay, draw the stars and then what? Many movements have this issue where they don't go past the symbolism of the movement. It's like, is this all we're doing? Okay. Okay, I'm going back home. So kudos to them for that. But the problem with Moxie is the perspective of whom this film is told by. You have Lucy, a smart, strong, outspoken young black girl who holds her own, right? Then you have Vivian, a timid, no life, at zero value to the big picture white girl who comes in and saves the day. Now, some may argue that Vivian makes for the better character arc because there's growth to be had. I absolutely agree with you. However, comma, it's pretty tone deaf to have a supporting character in film about a feminist movement and not speak to the plight of what it means to be black in that space because the kicker about it is this happens all the time in real life and in film the white savior coming in to make the change overshadowing those who've already done work in this case, Lucy has already made her voice heard. She's told an authority, she stands on her own feet. Yet, this story depicts Vivian as the hero. The girl who didn't even have the courage to say she was the one who wrote the newsletter until the end of the movie. And to be clear, I absolutely believe in sisterhood across the board, all racial backgrounds. When it's done in good taste, Watching this, I immediately thought of the Jane Fondas, the Dolly Partons, the Jessica Chastains, and these are just women that came to mind, but the difference between these women and the protagonists in this film is that they stand ten toes down. There is no unsure, timid, regretful energy. Towards the end of the movie, she's mad at her mom telling her, I'm not you and the only reason I did any of this is because you made me think I could do it. And her mom's just like, okay. These women stand side by side in the fight and they don't get discouraged because something didn't go the way they thought it would. And lastly, they elevate the voices of those who have been silenced or ignored. Vivian did some of this in her own way, I guess, but it didn't read well. If the writers felt it was absolutely necessary to have a white female feminist protagonist, the way they could have fixed this is by either giving her some sort of personality traits that showed that she was truly invested in this and it wasn't something of a throwaway like i need something to do with my time i need something to care about well what do you know look at here you know or they could have had Lucy have a talk with her about it. Her feelings of being minimized because of her racial background. Similarly to the way Claudia did. Claudia took the fall for the Moxie group and was suspended. And she told Vivian like, listen, this is not a win for me. You don't understand because you're white and you have no idea what it's like to be in my position. It would have been nice for Lucy, Vivian's main inspiration, to have this same talk, but they didn't, thus dropping the ball and losing me in the process. I mean, the story goes on, more things happen, but it was like, yeah, it was kind of lost upon me at that point. On the bright side, there are a few things that I did like about the film. I like that they showed the ups and downs of friendship. Claudia and Vivian had been best friends since like four years old, but they had nothing in common. Sometimes you grow apart from people when you find others that you share a common interest with, people that really get you. It was interesting to see how they navigated their friendship after that became apparent. There was one student who only had a few lines, but she was absolutely hilarious. I wish they would have given her a bigger role. And lastly, if you don't watch this movie for any other reason, it's worth a watch for Seth and Seth alone. You know that dream guy who has all of the right qualities? He's good looking, charming, funny, supportive, respectful, values himself as well as women, sensitive, yet knows when to put his foot down. That Seth, I mean, he really pulls at your heartstrings throughout the movie. Personally, I could do without the dates at the funeral homes. That was a little creepy. But other than that, he's a catch. And he's the polar opposite of Mitchell, and it's obvious that it was done purposely. But it's like, do guys like this really exist? No, like, really, do they? I'm not asking for myself or anything. I'm asking for this person who wants to remain anonymous. But if you know of anybody, let me know, and I will uh, get the information to this anonymous person who is totally not me. Thank you. Have you guys seen Moxie? If so, 
What did you think? Do you agree with my critiques? Let me know down below. To my blush bunnies who requested this movie, if you liked it, just because I didn't like the movie does not mean I don't love you. <laughs> Quick update, the podcast. The Blush Bunny podcast will have more episodes soon, so make sure you're following on your respective platforms. There I will post exclusive content that will not be on YouTube. Thanks to my Twilight video being blocked and demonetized, <laughs> you guys have voted for a podcast alternative, so I'm making that happen. Still working on getting it to all the platforms you guys mentioned that you use. To my Blush Bunnies that don't currently have an app that they can listen on, down Download the Anchor app from the link below is what I'm using to distribute the podcast and it's completely free for you guys to listen as well. I have no idea what I'm doing with this podcast just as with this channel but <laughs> I'll learn as I go. Also it's 2 a.m. while I'm recording this video so I am sleepy. <laughs> I'm very sleepy. I don't know why. I don't know why I did this to myself. Oh goodness, I can hear it in my voice. I've been trying not to sound sleepy this whole time. Y'all probably like, girl, this is how you sound all the time. <laughs> Listen, don't come for me, okay? <laughs> oh god. Oh god, that's funny. But anyways, enough about my stupid choices if you haven't done so already be sure to click like and hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell otherwise youtube will never show you my videos as always i'm all ears until next time bye